All right, good evening, folks. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's meeting. This is a public hearing for a proposed special benefit assessment project on Maryland Avenue, excuse me, Maryland Road and a portion of Elm Street, which is a private to public road upgrade here in the community of Kent Island Estates. This meeting tonight is being held at the United Communities Volunteer Firehouse. It is being videotaped for the public record. Uh, the meeting will be rebroadcasted on our local cable television station, QAC TV 7, and the county webpage at www.qac.org. Our Board of County Commissioners will be chairing uh, tonight's hearing. And uh, to introduce them, they are from my left, uh, District uh, Number 2, Patrick McLaughlin, District Number 4, Chris Corcorino, at large Commissioner and President uh, Jim Moran. Phil Duminell, our Vice President from District 3, and District 1, Jack Wilson. In addition, we have some county representatives here, county staff. I want to introduce them briefly. We have our Chief Roads Engineer, Shane Moore, over here. Jeffrey Rank in the back, our Director of Budget and Finance. Paul Seiden, our uh, Civil Engineer, Project Engineer on this potential project. And our Director of Public Works, Mr. Alan Quimby, uh, to Paul's left. In addition, we have our executive to the county commissioners, uh, Ms. Houck, Margie Houck sitting here in the audience, and of course our county attorney, Patrick Thompson. So we acknowledge everybody's uh, participation this evening, and by attending, you acknowledge that we are going to be recording this uh, public meeting and airing it later on our television station and website. Public comment will be taken following an overview of the proposed project. If you do wish to speak, uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the back on the table. Please try to limit your comments to three minutes, and comments can also be submitted in writing for the Commissioner's review. So next, we will stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission President Jim Moran. All right, thank you, everybody. And I am Todd Mon, the county administrator. So uh, as a matter of procedure, I'm going to ask uh, our county attorney, Mr. Pat Thompson, to read the uh, certified public notice. Shane Moore, our chief roads engineer, will then uh, present uh, the project. Uh, the commissioners will then receive uh, any public testimony, folks that have signed up. And then we'll close the hearing. The record will be left open uh, for additional comments. And a decision could be considered by the Board of County Commissioners at their next regular meeting on February 13th. OK? Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Todd. This is a public hearing being held by the County Commissioners of Queen Anne's County, January 31st, 2024, at 7 p.m. in the Roman Coke Firehouse for the purpose of considering the adoption of Maryland Road and a portion of Elm Street special assessment charge for road construction. The purpose of these special assessment charges is to provide an equitable method of distributing the cost of constructing an 8-inch gravel base course, a triple surface treatment surface course, and associated drainage swale for Maryland Road. Everybody hear me? There we go. Uh, between Route 8 and the intersection of Elm Street and New Jersey Road to the benefit of property owners. The total estimated cost of the proposed construction is $525,000. Property owners will be assessed on a per property owner basis of the total actual project cost. The affected properties include all lot, lots which abuts which abut the aforementioned roads, excepting those lots which currently abut and take access from an existing county or state road. The total project cost includes all engineering construction and interest on funds borrowed to finance the construction. Property owners will have the option of paying their assessment via one of the following estimated repayment plans. A single payment of $11,413.04 or annual payments of over 20 years of $915.81. The annual payment option is computed with an interest rate of 
Persons who wish to comment on the proposed assessment may do so at this hearing. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each. Written testimony of any length may be submitted before the hearing to the Director of Public Works, 312 Safety Drive, Central Maryland. Questions prior to the hearing could be directed to R. Shane Moore, Chief Roads Engineer at the Department of Public Works. All hearing sites are accessible to individuals. Sign language interpreters and assistive listening systems are available. Part of the record of this proceeding will be a certificate of uh, publication indicating the notice of today's hearing was published for two weeks. The Bay Times Record Observer, New General Circulation in Queen Anne's County, and the certified, the certified letter which was sent to uh, all affected property owners. Shane. Thanks, Pat. Uh, for those who um, attended the public information meeting back in October, uh, the following presentation is very similar uh, to that presentation. Um, we have our screen up here and we'll go through the slides. If you cannot see, please feel free to move over to this side, see a little better. Also, this packet in the back is the slides as well. If you need a packet, just raise your hand and we'll get you one. Um, we are here tonight because of, um, for the road improvement project based on a petition uh, started in 2021 with the Canal and Estates Roads Association and the residents of Maryland Road at that time. Can go to the next slide, Paul. Thanks. Uh, this slide here shows the project um, limits and shows the associated with the assessment. I'm going to go in and out. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, please note, um, I've had this question come the um, circles with the numbers and the colors are simply for us to keep record. We, uh, we have to number every property owner so we can keep them in a database. And the color scheme is simply for who, was, who signed the petition to have an information meeting and, and which ones did not respond. That's, that's only for us to have an idea of how many people would like to have an information meeting um, to talk about the information that we're going to present tonight. Um, the, as you can see this, Maryland Road begins at Route 8, runs the entire length of Maryland Road, goes south on Elm, and then turns back east into New Jersey uh, for a total of 2,750 feet. Okay, Paul. Um, this is our local road section type 3. This is the uh, standard that we will be upgrading Maryland Road to and Elm Street. Um, Basically, currently, uh, Maryland Road is a 40-foot wide right-of-way owned by the Canal States Roads Association. Um, the current uh, width of that road approximately is uh, 12 to 14 feet in various areas that are remnants of a, perhaps a tar and chip road um, that have definitely got some potholes in it. Our, our minimum standard is 20-foot wide travel-way, as you can see here. Um, and that is the minimum standard, and that is for uh, our fire and rescue guys so that we can have two fire trucks on the road at the same time. Um, specific to this project, um, unlike our other projects that we've done in Canal Estates, is as you can see here, the 8-inch um, the uh, compacted base uh, shown here in a hatch pattern on top. We are... Let's try that, Mike. Oh, okay. project to speed up construction and keep the cost down versus trucking in material um, and hauling it in from distance we'd like to uh, look at soil cement and we have worked with a geotech and had borings done to come up with a soil cement design and with that design we worked with a contractor to give us a price to do the Maryland road work versus the county staff doing the work themselves all right Paul thank you so here's a little bit about the project. Um, as I mentioned, the total length is 2,750 feet. The current width is 12 to 14, and the right of way is 40. Uh, the sequence of construction, and this looks very familiar to you. It was been in all the letters mailed to you. Um, we would start with clear and grubbing within the right of way drainage easements, uh, clean and grade the primary stormwater outfall ditches, 
three and four are kind of together, stormwater management and regrade the open sex roadside ditches and insulation of entrance culverts, those are your driveway pipes. Uh, finally, number five is the road base widening and followed by the roadway reclamation soil cement uh, grade and compaction, followed by resurfacing with three courses of tar and chip. And then finally, the driveway ties in and completion. Okay. Um, the total estimated cost is $525,000. Uh, that includes everything from uh, from construction um, through a consultant from a through a contractor, as well as the tar and chip work. Uh, the assessment term is 20 years. The interest rate is proposed at 5%. Uh, the total number of property owners is 46, and that brings us to $11,413.04 uh, estimated cost per owner. That breaks down to a single payment of $11,413, or an annual payment for 20 years of $915.81. Again, these are estimated cost. We do our best to estimate very high. Uh, with the assistance of the contractor we were looking at. Um, you know, there are contingencies, and we do our very best to not come back and ask for more money at the end of the project. Okay, well. So finally, this is our schedule. We, are, uh, we had our public information meeting on October 25th. Um, we have our formal public hearing tonight, January 31st, and we are taking the comments tonight to the commissioners on February 13th for consideration. In the event the project moves forward, um, we would begin, uh, we would notify all residents with a letter, and we would begin the design, permitting, and bidding phase of the project. Now, um, for those that attend the information meeting and you got the letter in the mail for this meeting, there's a slight adjustment on our estimated schedule. We've given ourselves a little bit more time. Uh, we, didn't, we, were, we felt like we were pushing ourselves up against the colder months of, next year, of, the, of this year with construction. So we have decided to look at design permitting and bidding through this summer into fall. If we are able to escalate that and, and, and get this out to bid, that'd be great. But we kind of think we're going to be more into the construction, um, award of the contract, construction and tarnship next summer in 2025. Uh, we will monitor through the winter season after it's completed with closeout project punch list in April, May of 2026. Um, at which time we would have a county resolution and send assessment letters in June or July of 2026 with a full payoff option in September of 2026. However, if you're doing an annual payment, it would be the following year. So your first payment would be due July of 2027. Um, go ahead, next slide. Um, this is our uh, final slide. Uh, before we kind of go over um, the steps, uh, the next steps. One of the issues that comes up quite a bit with these projects is, if the project is approved, the um, and you sell your property, the assessment um, can be uh, passed to the next property owner. Um, however, if you sell, if this project moves forward and you get a letter saying the project's moving forward, um, and you sell your property before the assessment is levied, which would be in 2026 please notify your real estate agent that you, this levy is out there. We, that, that would be on you as a property owner to pass that information along, and we do request that you do that. Um, also, oh, can you go back one slide, Paul, just real quick? Um, the other thing that comes up quite a bit is on the uh, third line down, the decision by the commissioners, February, March 2024, if the commissioners choose to move forward with the project at that point, we, the county, would then assume maintenance of the road at that time. We will uh, you know, fix potholes, scrape the road, snow removal. It'll be just like a county road. We just won't do any imp major improvements until we've gone through the design, the permitting, um, and the bidding out, um, which uh, we, we just went over. Also, uh, in the design, permitting, and bidding phase of this project, just to make sure everybody's aware, um, you know, this project, even though it's a county project and sponsored by the county, if it moves forward, is, is just like every other project out there. The permitting will be done through the Queen Anne's County Department of Planning and Zoning. Um, we will have grading permits, uh, sediment erosion control permits through soil conservation. We'll have storm water management permits through DPW, and we will have uh, all permits through the Critical Area Commission, which is in charge of the shoreline. Um, go ahead, Paul. So the next steps now are uh, to testify. 
um, we ask that you state your name and address for the record, um, and all comments are hopefully limited to three minutes. Um, if you do not want to talk, um, you don't want to get up today, uh, you don't have to, but please uh, reach out to me either by email or phone call or write a letter. I have already received four uh, between letters and emails so far. Um, and we, we'd like to have this, we'd like to hear from everybody if you're a little shy to talk. Again, we are going to the commissioners on February 13th, so as long as you get your comments to me in writing um, before then, that would be very helpful, very helpful. All right. Thank you. All right, I'll call the people who have signed up, and uh, following that, I'll, I'll give anybody who hasn't signed up an opportunity to speak. The first person uh, on the list is Janet Watson Riccini. Getting other estimates. One one three Maryland Road. One one three Maryland Road. Thank you. No. This this is to the commissioners. Say anything you want to. If you have questions, staff will be available after the hearing to answer any questions. So um, I was kind of under the impression there may be other bids obtained, and I didn't hear any mention of that. Um, uh, yes, they're not going to answer that. Um, is this going to be? Uh, a project that ends up stinging like the sewer system did. Is this going to be another project that's going to sting us like the sewer project did? Okay. Um, you do know that there are people leaving Maryland Road because of this. At some point, do the actual people on Maryland Road get to have a vote on this, yay or nay? So far, all I can gather is it's just been informational. Is that a good enough, clear enough question? Okay. And when you get down to how this will be paid, um, is annually of $915.81, is that have to be that way or can it be done monthly? Because I got a news flash for you all. Not everybody that lives on Maryland Road is rich and we do have quite a few senior citizens that do things by the month to survive. I'm done, thank you. Thank you, uh, Bob Woolley. Uh, Bob Woolley, 121 Maryland Road. Uh, the potholes on the road, I actually I vote yes for this project. Uh, from Route 8 down, I'm about middle between Route 8 and Oak. <clears throat> and at the beginning of the road, the potholes aren't that bad. But down in front of my house, there's 12 potholes all the way down to the oyster shells. And we got, I don't have trash service there, but there's uh, three different trash companies that come up and down that road and just tearing the road up. And every time it rains, they fill the potholes up and it just washes it right out. So sooner or later, 12 holes are gonna be just a big ditch right in the middle of the road, right in front of my driveway, which I can't even get in and out. Um, so I really hope everyone 
votes yes for this. Uh, as far as a lot of people are concerned about the drainage ditches, uh, it can't be any worse than what we have. There's a lot of people's driveways under the drain pipes underneath the driveways. They don't take care of them. They're clogged up. Uh, and that's pretty much just maintenance on the homeowner that should be taking care of some of that. But the new ditches is going to take, take a, a lot of burden off a lot of this. Uh, as far as what she brought about the voting, it is very unclear about how we all voted for this because there was a petition that went out in 2021 and my neighbor done that and apparently we went to the meeting in October they said that that all those votes did not count so kind of unclear how we are voting on this whole project uh, it probably should be like a door-to-door -door thing that everyone gets a chance to vote and they know everyone has voted for it thank you for your time Dick Sells Good evening, Commissioners. Um, I'm Dick Sells, current, pre current president of the, the Kent Island Estates Roads Association. Um, as Shane mentioned early in his outline, we began petitioning in January of 2021. We put the petitions out to all of the roads uh, in Kent Island Estates. All of the roads voted to move the process to an information meeting with one exception. And we followed up and up to now during the information sessions that, that Shane has, has put on for us and showed again this evening, um, it, it is pretty clear that our original uh, concept was to work with our worst roads first, and Maryland was the first on that list. Not not the uh, not the people that live on <laughs> Maryland Road by any means, but uh, certainly the condition and the base of the road and the difficulty to keep it um, in reasonably passive passable um, condition. Um, the Roads Association, uh, as you probably know, collects $10 per lot, per planted lot per year, and that is our entire budget to maintain these roads. Um, just buying millings uh, takes um, a, a good chunk of our annual budget. We do have, have to pay contractors to do the actual work, uh, but thankfully um, Shane and Public Works have uh, been very helpful in really containing, uh, um, keeping these roads in, in passable condition for us. Um, so for the sake of the community and the fire department, the the schools, um, it's, it's almost imperative at some point, if not, uh, if, if not absolutely, to, to get these roads uh, completed at some point in time. It's been 55 years since the Roads Association said, here is the schedule of how we're going to build these roads. And all the roads that we've, that we've done so far, uh, Worcester, Elm, um, West, West Virginia, Virginia West, were on that list. But Maryland has always been on top of the list, and we sincerely hope that we find a way to, um, to do this uh, project and get this, this road completed for the community and for the people that live there now and will live there in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Patricia Edgerton. Good evening. My name is Patricia Edgerton and my address is 242 Maryland Road, which is at the corner of Maryland and Elm Street. 
The last time this road was done was in 1993. I remember this because the, that was right after we bought the property. Nothing major has been done since except build potholes, which does not last. I have two main concerns. The first, one of which is the cost, after just putting out $12,000 for the septic system. As we've been quoted, the cost being one payment of $11,413.04, or annual payments, which ends up the cost being $18,316.20. My second concern is the actual marking of the road plan. I'm assuming that it will not be coming over anyone's property lines. I've been told that the corner between my property and Mr. Wheeler's property is low point for that end of the road and that, that it's where the drainage would need to be. But no one has, set, has specified how this is to be accomplished. My house is wooded on both sides with sweet gum trees. We all know that they will leave a mess of leaves and gumballs in any kind of ditch. So a drainage ditch through any of that area will be very difficult for three senior citizens to keep free of debris. I know that this is the closest point to the water and crosses my property and marshland, which is considered a critical area zone. I was also told that no environmental study would be done. My neighbor, Mr. Wheeler, and I have been working on preserving the marshland behind our properties for the past 18 years or so. And I have a couple pictures, if you would like to see them, of that area of the progress that we have made. We have mostly gotten the invasive species Phragmites under control in that area and brought back a few varieties of bay grasses as well as some plants such as fever few and fleabane. Any kind of drainage across this area would not only disrupt the progress that we have made, but would accelerate the erosion of my marsh property. I have already given up a 50 foot by 830 foot easement of my property along Beach Road for improvements to that road. I do not intend to give up another easement across my property. Please take into consideration the environmental impact this drainage will have to the critical areas of the marsh at the shortest distance of that area. Also, please look at taking the drainage into the area adjacent to mine that is owned by the county. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Alex Criswell. Evening, my name is Alex Criswell, uh, 127. Um, so a little bit of background information about myself. Um, went to school for civil engineering. Uh, I'm very in tune with construction, um, but it seems to be this design or this intent of this road is very um, not finished, needless to say. Um, I spoke to the gentleman in the corner over there. Uh, he explained to me uh, the design isn't made yet. That was essentially just a, uh, uh, a rough, a uh, a niche design. Um, if I'm going to be putting money into something, I expect to know all the data, not just bits and pieces or vague information. Um, it's well aware that there's uh, a lot of older generations that are here um, against the road, for the road. Um, I personally did not get to vote because I just moved in my house on October. Um, so I'm not sure what the one paper said that I did agree to this, but um, I do not agree with it. Um, but yeah, I would just like to have some more information on the actual project. I think it's very incomplete. Um, if I'm paying money for it, I think I deserve to know what it is. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's everyone who signed up. Is there anyone else who has any public comment? Yes, ma'am.
Hi, uh, Sheila Eisel, 224. Um, I want to say I would love to say yes to this project. No, the road's not great. We bought the house 10 plus years ago with the road being the way it is. Um, I've put two kids through elementary school, middle school, and you know, I have one in high school now, and one's still in middle school. I've schlepped them to the bus stop on Oak in New Jersey every day. Um, you know, hopefully maybe younger generations at some point will be able to have their children, you know, be able to be picked up at their home, uh, like most of the other streets around us. Ken Island's a great place. It's, it's thriving, um, but you know, we get our tax assessment the other day. So according to this, our house is worth almost $100,000 more than we paid for. Comments that were made were, this will improve your house, this will improve the sale of your house. Well, that's adding to the tax bill that we pay every month between the county and the state. So I broke down the numbers. My math is wrong. Please excuse me. Um, so basically you're talking about right now, without paying for trash that the county does not provide for, uh, you're talking about $425 a month if this road goes through. Look around at these people. Do you think they have 400, you know, coming up with a $401.25? Take the trash if you have a blue hen, baits, whatever, that's $501.25. The tax assessment, add on to that. What are you talking, probably another $100 for your taxes. I am imploring you, please find some kind of way to get this price down to where it's more affordable, comparable to the other streets. I know our street is the worst street, but you know, when you're tacking on a 5% interest rate, the sewer was zero. We were told we would keep it under $100. Yeah, it's $100, but you pay it online, it's 103 and some change. So these kinds of things, I agree with the gentleman here. Until I see complete down to the cent, I can't, I can't be for this project. We're talking about budgets. I gotta keep, put two kids through college at some point. I don't wanna leave Kent Island. I don't wanna leave Maryland Road. It's a nice, quiet road. There's nobody behind us. The neighbors are all great. Um, but you know, this is just, this is a lot. This is a lot piggybacking off of that sewer. And uh, again, just, just please consider trying to find some, some way to get the cost down or the money down, not just for us, for everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, my name's Daryl Volney. I'm at 210 Maryland Road. <clears throat> I know uh, years ago, they tried to make this a public road. It's been about 10 years ago, I guess, Shane, or whatever. I think the cost per resident then was like $7,000. 10 years later, we're at 11,000. Cost keeps going up. The road keeps getting worse. If we don't do it now, what's the cost gonna be in 10 years? 20,000 a person? That's why I'm for it. This road's had its drainage problems. I, sit in my, I submitted my re, uh, written testimony the other day with pictures. You can see what the drainage problems are. I think this road needs it, and basically that's it. I think we should go forward with this. The sooner the better. Thank you. Any other public comment? Commissioner Moran. All right, we're going to. All right, we're going to close the uh, public comment section of the hearing. John, you want to roll forward? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, did you want this one? Okay. okay. Shane, you might as well hold on to that. Um, okay. Uh, one of the questions brought up, uh, other bids. Is the county doing the road? Are we bidding this out? Is, you know, who, who's doing the construction and right. how many bids do we get? Yeah, uh, kind of go 
step back just a little bit with that, that question, try to get answer a few more questions in there. Um, the original, um, uh, the original petition in 2021 was to uh, see what kind of community support there was to have an information meeting to go over what we just went over. Um, we, the county, cannot respond to one citizen saying, I want to upgrade my road. The county's not going to invest a ton of money. We look for, this is a, this is a community project. This is a grassroots project. This started with the homeowners. Um, so the petition and the um, attached drawing with the little circles is just to show this is the support to get to have an information meeting where the county invests time and money, hires a geotech, works with a contractor, come up with a design, a preliminary design to get an estimate um, and put in that effort. The information meeting, which we had in October, everyone was invited to, we go over those, those dollars and cents, we go over the construction methods, we review all that information, and the idea is that um, we look for an impromptu vote of who wants to go to a public hearing. Now, the county commissioners are the ones that approve a public hearing like tonight. So I have to take that information of who attended, how many were against it, how many were for it, and then they can decide to move forward with a public hearing. That's just the stage we're in right now. Um, the vote that keeps getting brought up is the, you, this is the night as indicated in the information meeting and as stressed in the letters that went out, this is your night to testify on what you wanna see done, how you want it to happen. Um, the commissioners are looking for this information. They are the ones that vote to do this project if, if they wanna do this project. They are the ones at the side, they are the roads board. It's, it's, it's you that need to testify what you wanna do, whether it's here or whether it's in writing or an email, that's, that's on you. So that gives you a little bit more history of what, technically how to vote. They're looking for your, what you wanna see out of this. Okay, are we, are we square on that one? What was, how, what so, was the question? So, so just to be clear what you're trying yes. to say. So in this particular project, instead of the county doing the work, we're try, we, are, we have worked with a geotech and we have worked with a contractor that's familiar with the county and is an expert in soil cement. Has come up with a cost to do this project. Um, we have that, we feel that that is in good faith. We are happy with that estimate and that estimate is used for the information meeting and this hearing. If the commissioners choose to move forward with this project, we will then at that time do a complete 100% design and all permitting. But the effort and the cost to do that um, it's not something the county typically does until there's enough community support and the commissioners have seen this and decided to move forward with the project to invest that kind of time and money. Um, the, the other question that came about the dollar amount, I, I, even if we had a full design right now, um, putting it out to, until we put it out to bid and get multiple bidders and then bring that back before the commissioners to approve the project, you know, even then the dollar amount can change. There's, there could be change orders, there could be this. There's no way to get, the county can guarantee the price until the project is complete. Now, part of that is the $525,000 is the best estimate that we have. Now, we, but that also is whatever the project costs, the project costs $425,000, that's all you pay. So whatever the project actually costs the county to do, that's all that the residents are responsible to reimburse the county for. And as part of that, the design, the geotech, the permitting, all that which would have to be done by a design consultant is done gratis by the county for free. But we don't typically move forward with that until the commissioners okay the project. I have a question real quick. Um, for the folks who are here this evening, if you're here with a significant other, just one of you raise one. How many homeowners do we have here this evening? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, thank you. So Shane, just to be clear, um, the vote to do to as the roads board, the vote to do the repairs to this Maryland Avenue. Maryland Road. Excuse me, Maryland Road. It, it really, while we take the input, we could very well, if the, if the whole room was full and everyone said no, we as the roads board could override that by saying yes we're going to do it anyways because it's a yes. safety issue okay i just want to make that that point and another question was asked payments can it be made monthly or uh, i know you're saying yearly or a one-time payment 
Yes, June, our June. finance office has asked that all assessments be done yearly. Um, the the amount of assessments the, the county has that getting into, as we used to offer monthly, uh, semi-quarterly, or quarterly and semi-annual were too much for the finance office to handle. There's just too many assessments. So it's a, it's a once a year assessment. Shane, can you do a, for the 13th, when you bring it in, can you give us a, yeah, can you give us a breakdown of in $50,000 increments for that price coming down, what it would do to the monthly and yearly payment? So take me down to 325000 just out of curiosity, if you could. I couldn't, I could get that, but I couldn't do it in my head. No, 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 for the 13th. Yes. Can, can you bring uh, it in for that meeting so we have it in front yes. of us? Okay. Uh, 50,000 increments? Yeah, 50. Yes. Yeah. And is there any reason, I mean, is it, we, we're looking in front of us, and I know you don't have this in front of you, uh, of all the roads that have been done down here and what their costs were and what their annual payments were. And uh, the cost per foot is the one that's is a little bit alarming. Uh, Maryland is, Maryland Avenue is at $191 per foot, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Virginia was 88. And, and I know that, that there's a, well, according to this, there's, there's only a year's separation. What, can you explain why that number is so high? Uh, indicated at the information meeting, one of the huge costs in these projects is the ditch alignment. When is we have the ditch. the ditch alignment. So the road cross section, um, which is our 40 foot wide with our 20 foot wide road, um, you have uh, the standard detail um, and the minimal design uh, constructions uh, materials for the county. We, in order to get those ditches in section on Maryland, they have to be adjusted. Certain roads, um, Worcester, Elm, Virginia, those ditches were already pretty much there. So there wasn't a lot of money in re or moving ditches. It's one thing to regrade a ditch, it's another thing to take the ditch and move it back a few feet. Because you, you have to move, you, you're, you're filling and you're cutting and it takes time. So that's one of the, the significant increased costs there. Plus, most of the other roadways we, we've dealt with in Canada States, the roads are typically uh, more like 16 foot wide, so we're adding two foot to either side. Maryland's just a very narrow road. Um, and, and so you have the ditches and you have the narrowness of the actual base that's there and the base we have to bring in, which is why instead of trying to bring in tons of material to widen that base to 20 feet, we would bring in some, but we would do the sole cement so they could just mix the cement mix in while they're reclaiming and get that hard base. So that's, those are the two main reasons the, pro the project estimate is that high. Now we, we estimated uh, back in 2007, so it's, it's pushing 20 years since we did the Maryland Road before. I think we were at close to 350,000 then using Air Forces um, um, back when we had the staff to do a, a road that size. Um, so I, I, we, we, didn't, we did a preliminary cost estimate to do it the, the old school way with bringing material in with stone, um, and it was more than what we're, we're estimating now. So we, we did a little bit of work, a little bit of homework, trying to come up with the best effective, cost effective, and the fastest. So that's another issue. Maryland is one of the longest roads that we have in Canada States besides South Carolina, which is still private. So it, we didn't, it's, it's one of those projects that it would take us, air crews, all summer to do. So if we can hire it out and we can get it done cheaply and fat and quickly, and you don't have those, the dust and the inconvenience of construction equipment in front of your house for a few months, we, it's a win-win. We look at it. Question. Uh, can you explain the percentage rate? Five percent. Where do we get that from? Can you explain the five percent, the interest rate? Where are we getting that from? And <coughs> uh, that's dictated by the Department of, I mean, the Department of Finance. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I believe the, I believe the interest rate reflects what it would cost the county to borrow the money to do right. the project. Right. Yeah. To go to the bond. That, that's, a, that's, that's a matter of. So the interest rate, we have to bond it out, right? So the county gets bonds. That dictates what the market is. Several years back, the rates were a lot better for the county. We were getting 2%. We're not getting that now. So this is not, this is not a revenue generator for the county by charging 5%. This is the bond rate that, that we're being charged in order to, to finance the project. You know, I will, you know, from my own standpoint, uh, 
I'm in construction, uh, and, and I'm looking at this number, and, and it's still very alarming to me. That it's $191 a, a lineal foot, and I think that one of the things that, as commissioners, and I'm going to propose that we look at is maybe capping uh, the total cost to the owners between eight and nine thousand dollars versus eleven thousand four hundred uh, to bring it more in line with some of the other projects. Now I know there's inflation, but this number is really high, and I and, and I understand you know what you're saying, Shane. But I think that we can, I think the county can afford that. And, and that's why I want to see he backs it down by increments of fifty thousand. Right. We can see it. I'm in the same opinion. Too. We right. can get it down into that range. Yeah. By how, how do we get it down there? And what's it going to cost? Correct. Right. So. Yeah. So, so I mean, I that's one of the things we'll you know. It's Excuse me? Uh, I didn't have my mic. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, that's one of the things that we will look at uh, before our, our vote um, in, I guess, at our next commissioner meeting. When are you having it? The, the next one? Right. 13th, Jim. Yeah. February 13th. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, February 15th. Thank 13th. you. 13th. 13th, excuse second, me. Yeah. Second Tuesday of March. Yes. So does anybody else want to? Just for everybody's yeah, record, you, just for everybody's record, our commissioner meetings are the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month. Correct. And you can also we have a Zoom, and you do not have to come to the commissioner building. We have a Zoom, and you can do public comment through uh, Zoom or whatever. So, uh, or yeah, or then you can come on up. We'd love to see you. So. Anyone else have any uh, comments on this? Commissioners? Just thank you for yeah. coming this yeah. evening. Yeah. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, we can't vote tonight. You're right. We do have. <laughs> either the work or they didn't. We do have a couple of items of continuing business, so you're certainly welcome to stay. Uh, these are unrelated to the road special benefit assessment hearing, but. Um, in your, in your packet, commissioners, I have um, a proclamation uh, 2405 for National Unclaimed Property Day. And uh, this is a proclamation we received from the Comptroller of Maryland declaring February 1st as the Unclaimed Property Day in Queen Anne's County to go along with the state and national uh, acknowledgement of that uh, event. You want me to read it? If, if, excuse me. If we're, we're see, hello, hello. We're trying to. They're still filming. This yeah, we're st we're still live on the, and we're still filming. So if you could take your conversations outside, we'd greatly appreciate it. Would you like me to read that? Uh, yes, Commissioner. If one one of you would be so, so it's kind. Proclamation 24-05. Whereas nationally, one in seven people has unclaimed property, and more than five billion is returned by states annually. And whereas the Maryland State Comptroller's Unclaimed Property Division achieved remarkable success in 2023, bringing in $315 million in unclaimed property from businesses and organizations and returning $81 million to rightful owners. And whereas for over five decades, the state has diligently received and safeguarded forgotten funds encompassing uncashed checks, insurance proceeds, forgotten dividends, and various financial accounts abandoned due to lost contact with their rightful owners. And whereas finding unclaimed property is easier than ever with a simple and free search available on the state's unclaimed property website at https www.marylandtaxes.gov backslash unclaimed dash property backslash, I recommend Googling that, where one can easily file a claim and potentially reclaim lost funds. And whereas this day highlights the unwavering commitment to reuniting citizens with their lost or forgotten assets, and now therefore we, the county commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby proclaim February 1st, 2024 as Unclaimed Property Day throughout Queen Anne's County. We urge all citizens to take advantage of this free service and utilize the state's website to check for unclaimed property under their name. We also encourage Queen Anne's County citizens to share this information with their families, friends, and neighbors to raise awareness of this program, ensure more citizens are reunited with their unclaimed property, and celebrate the power of good stewardship. And I'm actually happy to read this because I've actually taken advantage of this, and it does work. It takes a little bit of time, but you can. I had one that was almost 18 years old, and it was over $1,000 um, through a previous insurance policy that I had had that went unclaimed for all those years. And, I went online, I filled it out, filed it, and it took about six months, but lo and behold, 
I had an ACH into my bank account for the money, so I'd, I'd recommend everybody go on, put your name in there, and check it out. You may have, may win the lottery, I don't know. So. <laughs> okay, thank you, Commissioner Wilson, for uh, reciting that for us tonight. Uh, the second item we have is a support letter for House Bill 293, the State Boat Act. This is for abandoned or sunken recreational vessels, identification and removal. And this is a county-sponsored bill over in Annapolis for the General Assembly to consider that would authorize DNR to remove abandoned or sunken recreational vessels secured to certain apparatuses or left anchored and unattended for more than 60 days under certain situations. Motion to sign a letter of support for House Bill 293. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right. Thank you, Commissioners. That is all of the business I had for this evening. Yeah, I'm going to make a motion to go into closed session under General Provision Article 3-305B1 to discuss boards and commissions and personnel. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Ready? All right. We're going to bring this meeting back to order. All right, we just had a brief uh, closed sessions under uh, General Provisions Article 3305B1 to discuss boards and commissions and personnel. And uh, we have one item that we, we discussed about the increasing the stipend for the uh, Police Accountability Board chairman from $1,800 to $2,400. Right, so I move, I'm going to make two motions. I'm going to combine them, though. Um, into one. I move to approve a stipend increase in the amount of $2,400 per year for the Police Accountability Board Chair and also to increase um, the stipend in the amount of $2,400 a year for the Administrative Charge and Committee Chair. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. And the second item was we uh, offered uh, a letter to the Housing Authority Board of County Commissioners, or excuse me, Board of Commissioners, uh, to extend some financial assistance to the Housing Authority Board. I move that we sign the uh, letter to the Housing Authority. Second. We have a motion and a second on this item. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. And I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.